From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. The Jack Van Impey presents. Well, you know, friends, there is a shocking statement that I'm going to give you right away with the top three headlines that I always like to present this program with. And the first one is leaked FBI data revealed 7,700 terrorist encounters in the USA in one year. I couldn't believe that. In one year, 7,700? We'll be talking about that in just a moment. And then Middle East Christians need protection. I don't think we really realize what they're going through over there. You know, we have a few little encounters here where somebody will criticize us, and we think that's something. They need protection over there. And then police search for terrorism link in New York blast that injured 29. You know, friends, we really are facing some, some very new uh, revealed acts of terrorism that we haven't e even imagined. For instance, that first headline I couldn't get over. But uh, right up front, I want to just once again give you some good news that we've been dealing with many signs that Jesus gave. Remember last week? Many signs that he gave uh, that would happen just prior to his coming again. Well, one of the signs is that the gospel would be preached around the world. Jack, I can't get over that, how we're involved in that. It's so oh, wonderful. Boy, for a number of years now, praise the Lord. And you know, friends, we've heard from all 247 nations how wonderful and how we praise the Lord for that. Jack, do you believe that you know he's been very, very ill. You've all prayed for him. Do you believe that's why the Lord brought you back, Jack, to preach around the world? Oh, definitely. I obey this book. Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and praise the Lord. We've been doing it for quite a number of years. Matthew 28, 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, what is our message? The gospel. And what is the gospel? 1 Corinthians 15, 1, I declare unto you the gospel, the good news. That's verses 3 and 4, that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, why and what do we preach? Well, first of all, the good news is that Christ died for our sins. We saw that already. But why did he die? Because Romans 3.23, and this is the Romans wrote, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, and that's Romans 6.23. But here is the great news, Romans 10.13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Now you're not saved any other way. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, I get a little disturbed with Mr. Obama, our president at times. The things he's been doing, he's been giving America away. We are headed, according to the Wall Street Journal, for great times of war and devastation, and our presence had a lot to do with dropping the guard of the United States of America and favoring Islam over Christianity. And here's why. 
they asked him in the Chicago Sun-Times, are you a Christian? He said, oh, yes, the old-fashioned kind. Preaching, there are many ways to have it. Well, then you don't know beans about salvation, Mr. President because that is not what this Bible teaches. It teaches only one way to heaven, not many, and that's Jesus. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man, no man can come unto the Father but by me. And Acts 4, 12 says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that's the name of Jesus. It's not the name of Allah. It's not the name of Buddha. It's not the name of Zoroaster. It's Jesus and Jesus only. And one day he's coming back in Philippians 2, 14 says, at the the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So President Obama, I encourage you to start reading your Bible. Maybe you'll find out what the real way is. Oh, Jack, you know, that's right. I, I don't know all the many verses of Scripture by memory that Jack does. He has over 18,000 verses memorized. But one that I will always present to a friend but Jesus said, I am the way. No man comes to the Father but by me. Oh, Rex, I'm going to tell this story. A lot of people are saying, you used to always include a little humorous joke. How about now? Okay, I was in evangelism for a number of years, and oh, I wanted a wife. I prayed and prayed and prayed. One night, a young lady is singing at my Youth for Christ rally in Pontiac, Michigan, and her name was <laughs> Rexella May Shelton. And she gave her testimony. I said, oh, 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 that's the one, Lord. I know that's the one. Right after the service, I said, would you go with me to the greasy spoon for hamburger? She said, I'm sorry. I'm here with my boyfriend tonight. Oh. And we're engaged. Oh, dear. Oh, joy. I went home and the Bible says, pray without ceasing. And I prayed until one in the morning for Rexella. Uh, what did you pray? That God would take his life? No, that somehow they'd break up, and they did. And her brother and I were friends, and he worked this out with me so that I could date Rexella for the first time. And I'll tell you, I was so in love. Oh, oh. And there we were together. And one night we were looking out the window in Pontiac, Michigan. It was a beautiful night. and. We had done just a little kissing, not much because I was an ordained minister. <laughs> but anyway, I looked into her eyes and I said, Rexella, oh, wilt thou? And she wilted, <laughs> praise the Lord. And we've been together all these years. And we've had over 800 10-day church crusades in almost every city in American Canada. Then we had 225 citywide crusades with 10,000 pastors backing us and 10 million attendants. Amen. And up to this hour, we've got 20,000 to go. And next June is my big anniversary, 70 years in the ministry. And almost 3 million saved. So we have obeyed what we started out with, the gospel to the world. Amen. Thank you for your support and love and help. Mm. <laughs> oh my, oh my, Jack, that was very, very sweet, kind of a remembrance. You know, I was still in college, and it was wonderful to know that God had a different direction for me. Amen. And, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Well, we've really got, got to get back on the road here with so many of these very, very serious headlines. You know, we have a lot of wonderful Muslim people who are living here in America, but we have a very, very serious problem when it comes to what they want. They want Sharia law. 51% of U.S. Muslims want Sharia. That's the Sharia law. 25% okay with what? Violence against Americans. Now, this uh, comes out from the Center for Security Policy. And certainly it does give us uh, cause for pause, doesn't it? You know, friends, uh, I think I'd like to divide this into two sections and ask Jack if he would just refresh our memory. Very quickly, he's told us what Sharia law is. Now, Jack, would you please just once again give us a very quick synopsis of what Sharia law is? Why do they want that instead of our law? 
Rexella, it's the deadliest law that has ever been passed by any religious group, the Muslims. Now, when we get into our Ten Commandments, and that's Exodus 20, beginning of verse 13, says, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness lie, and thou shalt not covet your neighbor's house or his wife. Well, they kill their daughters if they marry someone they don't like or if they marry someone who's not a Muslim. Honor killing! And it's sad that in America now, over seven daughters have been put to death and about the same number in Canada. And we can't put them in jail because that's their law. It's the honorable thing. Yeah. Secondly, they kill all homosexuals. Rex Alec, can you just quickly read what it says about the homosexuals there? All right. I'd like to have that on the screen because it's very important. It's on jihad against homosexuals. Absolutely, not only kill your daughters if she has premarital sex, but they're against homosexuals. Look at this one. Behead, burn, and crush gays, Islamic preacher to deliver 10 days of lectures in London. And Rexella, London is yes. now where they have a new mayor, and he's a Muslim. He says everything's going to be fine, but he says there's going to be a lot of terrorism, so get used to it. God forgive them. Thirdly, uh -huh. they put to death all apostates. An apostate is one who says a word against Allah, the Quran, or Muhammad. Imagine. And guess what? They have killed millions. Why? Because Saudi Arabia say we are Sunnis. And Iran, you are Shiites. And Saudi Arabia has now gone so far as to say, we do not believe any of you Iranians are Muslims, you're fakes. And so they're going to go in and start slaughtering them. Brothers in the same faith. Christianity doesn't do that. In 1 John 3, 16, it says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because God laid down his life for us, but we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm. Boy, what a difference. That's like John 3, 16, God's love of the world. But fourthly, they kill all Christians. And since the Crusades in the 800s, 300 million Christians have been beheaded and raped and slaughtered and hanged from meat hooks and all the rest. 300 million. Jack, and you know that 300 million, it's continuing now. How often have I said and shared with you that Christians are in danger around the world? I'd like for you to take a look, please, at this USA Today. Middle East Christians need our protection. How very two Christians are harassed in more countries. Hey, you know how many? 130 countries than any other religion in the world. Now, I've taken something out of this article, and I'd like, Jack, if you would please read it for us there. I couldn't get over it. It's by Chancellor uh, Merkel of Germany, what she had to say. Christianity is the most persecuted religion in the world. So asserted German Chancellor Angela Merkel late last year, causing a stir. Merkel echoed a concern expressed by the then French President Nicolas Sarkozy, who warned in a 2011 speech that Christians face a particularly wicked program of cleansing in the Middle East, religious cleansing. And as I said, thousands have already been put to death. And I'm going to tell you something. It's going to get real bad because even the new man who heads up the government of Holland and England and where this thing is really growing in England in camps of Sharia followings. Very, very plainly said, all you people in England better get used to this because terrorism is coming. And when we just had our last debate, Hillary said, we're going to even do what we can for the Muslim people. Well, 
if your head's taken off and thousands of Americans are killed and they're telling us they're getting ready. The Wall Street Journal has been warning us that the bombs are coming and is coming from Russia and China and Islam. We better have the right person protecting our people and protecting our lives. Think twice when you vote. Mm. Oh, Jack, oh my. Well, you know, that first article that I read, all right, said 51% of the Muslims want Sharia law. Well, he's just explained what Sharia law really is. And then the second part of that, 25% say, violence against Americans, okay. I would like for you to see, please, the next few headlines pertaining to that violence against America. Alexa Musk address, may the Muslims wage war on America. Well, that was in a recent address there by a Palestinian. We must shoot any American carrying arms outside the United States. At least 10 killed after gunmen targets American University in Afghanistan. You're not safe in any country, no matter where you go. And then, like killing a chicken, trauma expert on mission to record ISIS horror stories. You know what? I, I just want to say something here before I go on. They're talking about killing women. And you know what? When they refer to those chickens, killing children. I can't believe it, how anyone could compare women and children. Let's go on. I have one more uh, headline I'd like for you to see here, please. Leaked FBI data reveal 7,700 terrorist encounters where? Right here in the USA in one year. Border states most targeted. Oh my, oh 7,700. They're waiting in every major state now. God, spare America. God, help us. So, you know, actually, Jack, they are targeting Americans right now. And they say it's all right. Yeah, they say it's okay with us. That's 25% of the Muslims. They're not talking about Sharia law. He is talking about getting rid of Americans. Mm, my, oh, my. Well, you know, we're going to be going to something that's very, very good in just a moment because someone is coming on the scene and they're going to stop everything. You know who that someone is? Our wonderful Savior. He is coming back. Now, you know, friends, I was very, very sad to uh, read to you on one of our past programs something about what happened to a priest in France. Well, you know, the persecution of Christians is around the world. The French church attack, priests throat slit in hostage taking near Rouen. And then going on, oh, you know what this president is doing? The Gitmo exodus. He's letting all of those that were there uh, as terrorists, he's releasing them. And he's saying, now don't do it again. But we know that they're going back to try and do this. Rex, all of the ones that were released before are now back killing everybody yes. around the world. And then I must go on here, Jack, the liberal threat to democracy. Hillary Clinton offers more of the same. And that is the scariest thing of all. Hey, you know, she's saying we're on the right road. Oh, Hillary, I don't think so. I don't think we're on the right road. And then here's someone. London's Muslim mayor tells New York and London to get used to what? Terrorism. And, uh, you know, he kind of made a little bit of a joke out of it. But truly, it is happening. And then here we are with this last headline. Congress to recess without gun bill. Now, you know, they're trying also to say, we don't need to have guns in homes. But you know, Jack, this is so important. Christians are being killed. They're saying, take the guns away for protection and so forth. I'm gonna tell you, Muslim people, something. And I hate to see it come. But you're not fooling around with Americans like you've been fooling around with the Europeans and all the people where you live in Libya and the rest and killing them. There are now the latest figures, 300 million guns in Americans' homes. Now, I realize maybe it's 150 million of them who have guns because they've got more than one. I don't know that. 
but I know there's a gun that's for every American now already owned by the American people, and they're not going to fool with you when you start monkeying with our country any more than you've been doing in some of these cities. God forgive you. And you know, I'm talking to you Christians now. Oh, it's so wrong. It is not wrong to defend yourself. Thou shalt not kill. Yes, Exodus 20, 13. Turn the page. He that smites a man shall be put to death. Leviticus 24, 17. He that kills a man shall be put to death. Brother Van Impe, don't you love the Lord? Hey, he's my Savior, and I'm in love with him. Well, don't you trust that he can keep you and protect you? Yes, but he's got another plan. And it's not the one that President Obama and Hillary have. Our Savior said in Luke 22, 36, if you don't have a sword to protect yourself, sell your garments and buy one. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's protect our families. Let's get ready. Oh, yes, Jack. We need to get ready. And you know we need to get ready for something else, too. Something, I mentioned it already in the program, for the coming of the Lord. Jay, isn't that going to be a wonderful, oh. I can't even, even put into words the event yeah. of when Christ returns. Let me give, talk about the rapture All as right, we close. Absolutely. I've got a whole pile here, but we're going to go for four weeks. I just laid so much aside, but listen to me. I felt the Spirit of God in me. Now, if you are a Christian, you don't have to worry about the future because these are the signs Jesus said would happen just before his return. And before they could happen, Israel would have to be a nation, as I said last week, and they'd have to be in control of Jerusalem. And for 2,000 years, they weren't until 1948 and 1967. And he said, when you see all these things connected with Israel being a nation in Jerusalem, being in the hands of the Jews, that's when I'm coming. You better get ready. And here's the good news. You don't have to worry about what goes on, the bombs and all the rest. Why? Revelation 3.10, I will keep you from, not through, preservation, heck, out of. That's the Greek word. How does he keep us out of it? One chapter up, four of one. Come up hither. And then we go up in the twinkling of an eye. First Corinthians 15, 52. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, with the dead, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We're not going to die during the tribulation hour. We're coming back for life. And then seven years later, we return with Jesus. And he sets up his kingdom in the new Jerusalem on earth. Philippians 2.10. Oh, this is precious. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. To the glory of God the Father. He's coming soon. Get ready. Jack, can you imagine on earth, every tongue confessing that Jesus is Lord? Jesus only. Jesus, absolutely. Have you confessed that Jesus is Lord and you've accepted him in your heart? No matter what you've done, the Lord died for you. He'll cleanse you. He'll make you his child. You'll have peace in a troubled world right now. As Jack prays his prayer, will you please ask the Lord to come into your heart? Jack, pray that wonderful prayer of salvation. Oh, listen, there's so many false Christ and false prophets in the churches today, even Bible preaching churches, and they're not telling you the truth. But it's closing time, and Jesus may come at any moment. He's going to come before all these tragic things happen. So get saved now. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord Jesus, no other name, shall be saved. Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for that precious blood that flowed from your wounds to wash away every sin I've ever committed. And now, Lord Jesus, I come trusting you for eternal life. I want to be with you, Jesus. 
Come into my heart. Save me now. I pray this in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'll never forget when I prayed that prayer. Oh, what a precious moment it was when the Lord came into my heart and saved me. Now, let me know. There's my address. I'll send you this little book absolutely free. First Steps in a New Direction. How good it is to walk with the Lord in this day. If you would love to have a DVD, Hearing the Truth or Is It a Lie? And my gift with it, The War on Truth, just hear what Chuck Oman has to say. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order, have your credit card ready and call toll free 24 hours a day, 1 800 JBI 7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717 Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. And I do want to emphasize, don't put off getting this wonderful offer. You know, I really, really love the wonderful verse in the Bible that says, train up a child and the way he should go. When he's old, he'll not depart from it. Listen to this one. Bring up a child in the way he should go, but be sure you go that way too. <laughs> How very true that is. We need to be living for the Lord. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>